the winner of the Daniel Phelan Award for Outstanding Achievement 2019 is Sir Harpal Kumar. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and Cathy, thank you for that very kind introduction. It really is an extraordinary honour and very humbling to be presented with this award today. Um, I never had the pleasure of knowing Daniel, uh, but what people have told me and what I've read about him makes it clear that he was a true pioneer for the charity sector and a giant on whose shoulders so many of us have the privilege to stand. So, I'd really like to offer my huge thanks to the Nominations Committee for selecting me for this award. It really is a very special recognition for all that we have achieved. I say we very deliberately because although I'm the recipient of this award, none of what I've done or have had the great opportunity to witness could possibly have been achieved without an outstandingly talented group of people, both staff and volunteers, in both of the charities in which I worked people whose energy, commitment and expertise I could rely on and build on to drive us to ever higher levels of ambition and achievement. So this award really recognises them and their dedication. Now I was asked to share some of my thoughts about the sector. Um, I have many thoughts about the sector, but there's something not very appealing about um, still being around when they lock the gates of the Tower of London. So um, I'm going to restrict myself to just two. Um, the first is the, obliga the obligation I feel we have as sector leaders to talk more about our progress, about the impact we're having, beyond, of course, what we do at these charity awards. And as Cathy has just touched on, without doubt, the highlight of my career at Cancer Research UK was the day in April 2014 when I was able to stand in front of the world's media and say that for the first time in history, more people were now surviving cancer than dying from it. And moreover, that our progress was accelerating. About this time last year, a man came up to me at an event and shook my hand. He'd been diagnosed with prostate cancer a few years earlier. He had had two or three lines of therapy, but his cancer had metastasized, and his doctors had run out of options. His PSA level was 509. He'd started to say goodbye to some of his friends. Then he was given the chance to go on to a clinical trial called Stampede. And to cut a long story short, his cancer receded. He felt better than he had in years. His PSA was 0.1. He felt fantastic and he was looking forward to spending at least the next five years with his kids. It's a heartwarming story and it's one of many hundreds I could have chosen. Abiraterone, the drug at the heart of the Stampede trial, was discovered and developed through work funded by Cancer Research UK. And it's now used to treat prostate cancer patients all over the world. In my view, people in the charity sector are too reticent to talk about our successes. We like to concentrate on our need. Our need for funds, our need for awareness, our need for political support. Talking about our progress isn't about hubris or, or arrogance or hype, but if we don't tell the public what we're achieving with their hard-earned donations, why should we expect that they'll continue to invest in us? In my view, we have a duty to share the progress we're making. And contrary to what many in the sector worry about, there's evidence that it makes our supporters more likely to give to us than less. People like to invest in success. So let's be proud of what we're achieving and talk more about it. Just 20 years ago, 29% of the world's population lived in extreme poverty. Now that number is 9%. In China and India alone, that's three quarters of a billion people who've been taken out of extreme poverty. We should be celebrating this. The original source of almost all human suffering is undergoing the most amazing transformation. But how many people know about it? 
On our TVs, it seems that nothing has changed. But it has. And it's our responsibility to tell it how it is. Because the voluntary sector has played a huge part in this progress. So let's talk about it. The public will still support us, possibly more so. My second reflection is that we should, uh, is that we should be more publicly ambitious. By definition, we're taking on some of the toughest challenges in society. We lead in areas that others won't. But we should go further. We should constantly raise our ambition and not be afraid to talk about it publicly. We have to believe in ourselves that we can find the solutions and deliver the outcomes we promise. Because that's the ultimate demonstration of our accountability to the public, to our supporters. On the same day that I was able to announce that half of people were now surviving cancer, I also set out Cancer Research UK's new ambition, that we wanted to go from two in four surviving to three in four surviving, and that we would make that progress in half the time it had taken us previously. Could I be absolutely certain we would achieve it? Of course not. But the galvanizing effect it had on our teams and on our supporters was profound. And you know what? We actually have a very good chance of achieving it. We have, of course, a long way to go, but we're making very good progress. And I have little doubt that setting the challenge drove our scientists and clinicians as much as it did our supporters. So I'll finish uh, with a quote which I always thought was a great metaphor for the work we were doing at Cancer Research UK and for many of us in the sector, from Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done. Thank you very much for this very special award.